What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. I'm gonna keep the intro short and sweet. Basically, we went out with a buddy from college and went spearfishing off the kayak. Uh, fortunately, we were able to get some to'au and unicorn fish and he was able to shoot some kole. So we're gonna do a little catch and cook today, try something new. We're gonna do a fish taco recipe that I did a long time ago uh, with some moo. Uh, finally got some good unicorn fish to use for this catch and cook. So let's hop in the water and I'll see you out there. Hopping in the water, it is crystal clear and super, super stoked because at this specific location, the water clarity is a hit or miss. So glad that it was clear today, ready to start the dive. We're not gonna be out here long, just looking around for whatever swims by. As I was swimming over this specific coral, I noticed a weird shape on top of it. And as I got closer, sure enough, there was a small taco sinking into the coral. He kind of pinned himself down, so I was super light when poking him out. And upon poking him out, I realized that he wasn't big enough. And he actually almost gets away here, but I was able to do a secondary grab. I think this ink attracted this toal over, and so I quickly dropped my spear gun into position, switched it off safety, and took a shot. These snapper are invasive in Hawaii, so big or small, we shoot them all. And this is one of the fish that I usually spear a lot, just because I see tons of them, um, and they're really good to eat too. Double trouble released this taco because he's not big enough yet and kept the snapper so so far good day i just love how quickly these octopus will go into coral it's always fun to see them crawl around once you release them i also added in this little shot of this little baby moo just because it's so dang cute i don't usually see moo this small but when i do they always come straight up to me like they've never seen a spear gun before in their entire life but Soon he'll learn, he'll find a bigger school and stay far away from me. So right here was kind of a blind drop. Um, it's very shallow here, so I wasn't expecting to see much other than more Toao or Pualus to roll by. Um, kind of dusted up and sure enough, these Pualu and smaller Uhu come over. And I was looking at the school of Uhu, but there are no keepers. Um, and I was just looking at these Pualu. And all of a sudden this Kala came by now, this is a pale tail call up. Never shot one before, but I heard they're pretty good. And I'm just kind of waiting, uh, see if anything else comes by. And if nothing else comes by, I'll take this call up because he doesn't seem like he's going anywhere. Keep on waiting, and I'm not really seeing anything else swim by, so running out of breath, and I'm in my mind deciding to take this call up home. Line up and pull the trigger. This is a pretty average sized pale tail kala. Um, super, super excited to try this one. I've tried the regular blue spine kala, and those are pretty good. Um, and the orange spine kala are, are decent too if you know how to cook them right. But I've never tried this pale tail kala, and I think this is, I think, the third of four unicorn fish in Hawaii that I've speared. I've never speared opelu kala, but I'm pretty sure that's it. I think there's only four. If there's more, let me know in the comments. But yeah, super stoked on this one. And then after this, my GoPro died, but I was able to shoot a good 16 inch uh, regular blue spine Kala. And there was a whole school of them um, out here too. So definitely have to go back to this spot and get some more Kala to grill. So we brought all the fish back over to shore and I'm gonna teach you guys some tricks on how to clean Kole. All Kole have a little soft spot right behind their eyes up on their top head. And you just kind of have to cut that down until you feel your knife break through the spine. Once you feel it really loose, stop cutting. And then what you can do is you can actually take your finger and pull back the head, kind of peel it off. And all the guts will come out with, with the cole head. So you get a clean cole super, super quick. You know, you don't have to deal with just like cutting right down the stomach and cleaning it all out. Cause all that head is not going to get eaten anyways. Um, so that's how I like to clean my cole. It's very, very simple, very clean, and you can clean 30 cole in like less than four minutes if you're quick. So kept doing this. It was such a beautiful day. Thank you again to Cole Powers who brought out his camera. Um, super stoked to get this quality footage for you guys. I have one more video with footage like this. So um, again, stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe if you like this kind of content. Something else you wanna do with all surgeon fish is remove their tail spines. That's such a hassle I've been cut before. It is not fun, so make sure to take your time in doing that. Something really weird about Tawau is that I've noticed that their guts are orange. 
Um, this is the only fish I've ever caught with orange guts. I don't know why it's orange. I don't know what causes them to be orange. If you guys know why they're orange, please let me know because every time I cut one, I'm always surprised again. And I don't know why because every single one I catch is like this. So let me know in the comments. Yeah, super stoked on getting another invasive fish off the reef. Super good eating. Not too much meat, but if you get a lot, it's good. And then again, two unicorn fish. Trophy catches of the day. Super stoked on these. Uh, we're gonna do a taste test comparison and I love Pale Tail Kala the best. So brought this Kala home, super stoked to give it a try. And we're gonna start the filet job on this fish. I usually use two knives, one smaller one and one longer one, and the small one is to make the initial cuts, and the longer one is to get the meat off of the skin. Finally done filleting the kala, and I was surprised to see just how white the meat is. Super stoked, look at that. All right, made it into the kitchen, and we're gonna be cooking up these kole as appetizers. Kole are very, very easy to cook. All you have to do is just set your oil to 375 degrees, season them with whatever you want, and make sure to score your fish before putting it in the oil, and then just drop them tail first. You're gonna let that fry for a little bit. Make sure that they're nice, crispy, and golden brown. I usually let them fry for four to six minutes on one side, and then I'll flip it over and fry for another two to four minutes. The ingredients that you're gonna need for this recipe are purple cabbage. Any cabbage works good, but I like purple cabbage. Some green onion, parsley, cilantro, guacamole, or an avocado, lemon, fish, tortillas, and that should be about it. Any kind of herb that you want that's growing outside, that's good on tacos as well, but we're gonna use some parsley and cilantro today. Make sure to cut up all of your ingredients very, very well. Um, you wanna put this on a taco, so make sure to pay attention to those smaller details in preparation. You can let your kole cook while you're prepping some of those ingredients. So finally the kole are done and they turned out delicious, super, super crispy, super golden. Definitely one of my favorite fish to catch and bring back home. And this is a fish that I learned to spear fish on. So it's a wonderful fish and really means a lot to me. All right, so to start off, we're gonna season our fillets of kala with Tony Sasseries. This is a classic real seasoning from back in the South and everybody has it in their pantry. So. I like to bring that with me and we're gonna be using that today to season our fish for the tacos. Put as much as you want on or just use whatever seasoning you want. Um, this part is optional and I like to add a lot, so it's always up to you. Make sure to get both sides, that's the most important thing. After that, we're just gonna put it on the pan, fry it up in some butter once the pan has reached 375 degrees and we're gonna let that cook on one side. Now all you have to do is just kind of wait for your fish to cook. And once it's cooked through on one side, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what to do after flipping it. This is the part that a lot of people don't usually do, but I like to actually break up my fish into smaller chunks. And this is good because it not only cooks faster, but it also allows people to choose how much fish they want on their tacos. If I was to just fry up the fillets, then people would have to have chunks of fish even if they only wanted a little bit. So this allows them to choose exactly how much they want. All you're gonna do is just break it up until it's small and you're going to let this cook until it's cooked all the way through and then put it in a separate bowl. You're gonna wanna heat up your tortillas as well, just a little bit. 
so it's easy to fold and tastes delicious on the mouth. All right, now that the fish is done and everything's ready, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to make a taco. This is my little sister. She's a pro at making the tacos and she actually made a fish taco sauce as well. So you place a tortilla on the plate and you're going to sprinkle on your fish first. Again, this is why I like to break it up. You can choose exactly how much fish you want on your taco. Next up, you just wanna grab some red cabbage and put it on top as well. Add some parsley or cilantro, up to you. Any other herb that you like will, will do well on a taco. And now add your guacamole or avocado, either or is fine, as long as you have some of that on it. I think it'd be a sin if you didn't have any kind of avocado or guacamole on your fish taco. And my little sister made this delicious, delicious fish taco sauce. Add any kind of tartar sauce or sauce of your choice, and I'll actually teach you exactly how to make this sauce in an upcoming video. And lastly, add some lime or lemon, either or is great, but I prefer lime. And then all you gotta do is just wrap it up in this specific way. Very, very interesting how she wraps this up, but it folds up super nicely and keeps all of the meat within. And that's how you cook a fish taco. If you're new, consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, um, again, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, gonna be posting some more content. I have tons of footage to edit. So y'all stay tuned. We're gonna have some bangers in the future. Make sure to subscribe and uh, wait for it to come. So see you on the next adventure.